Fantastic. Well, welcome, uh, everybody. Uh, folks will keep joining us, but I'm going to go ahead and start with some announcements, uh, you know, because we're going to, and by the time everyone's here uh, and warmed up, hopefully uh, it'll be time for Mike to take over in the, you know, the exciting part of the program. This program is the second of the Leading in a VUCA World uh, webinars that we've been doing. Uh, the first one was a couple of months ago, uh, led by Pete Blackshaw, and that was, that was phenomenal. That dealt a lot more with changes in the business and strategies and things like that. But one of the things that is particularly interesting about this uh, latest disruption is the remote work component. Uh, we just haven't seen it before. And so in talking with Mike, uh, he brought it to our attention. Uh, some statistics they had collected he's going to share with you um, about how broadly um, the impact was and not, not positive as for, um, on team spirit, uh, leadership, communication, all those things. So Mike's going to take you through all that, uh, but I let me get through this. Um, after this one, our next, uh, I'm, we're going to make an announcement for our New York chapter, which is a killer event. So watch for that. Um, then uh, we're going to plan our first social event for the year this summer. Um, I think we might even dare to get together in person for some of us. Um, more on that soon. The uh, uh, then back to in the fall, our big. Uh, Keystone or, you know, key event for the fall is um, Peg Wyant uh, wrote a book called uh, Run Red Shoe. And mm. Peg won a Lifetime Achievement Award from the PNG alumni. She's a PNG alumni. She's one of the first female managers ever hired by PNG. Um, and her book talks about it. And she's going to talk to us about uh, what does it mean to, um, uh, you know, um, overcome obstacles, break boundaries, be the first uh, of a lot of things. And I think all of us have something to learn from Peg, no matter what you think you know, um, every time I see her, I'm, I'm amazed. So that's September. Um, then in November is the global reunion. So keep an eye for that. That's gonna be a virtual hybrid event. So there may be something here in Cincinnati um, as well as online. Um, it's the global reunion. So there'll be chapters from around the world. There'll be uh, David Taylor, Ron Howard, a whole bunch of celebrities and uh, luminaries. So um, more on that. Uh, that's kind of our year coming up. Um, I did want to uh, thank our sponsor uh, for this particular uh, event, which is, let's see, um, uh, Johnson Investments. And let me get their information here. Okay. Um, so Johnson Investments, it's our, our longest running sponsor. Um, they make a lot of this possible uh, so that we can bring you these kinds of things for free, uh, cover all the streaming, the website, the overhead, all that kind of stuff. So thank you. Uh, Mike Stannis is our contact there. Mike's also a PNG alum, also our treasurer of the alumni. So he's one of our biggest supporters and um, uh, we thank, thank him and Johnson Investments for their support. Uh, I mentioned all the things coming up in the you know, year ahead. Um, and what I wanna make sure is uh, if, if you want to hear about things first or get more information, um, the best way to do that is you know, our local social media. Um, and the, the, some ways to do that is at P, pgalumscency.com um, where you can find ways to connect with us. Um, you can connect with us directly. Um, you can find all our email contacts, or if you want to see what we've been doing, uh, each year Sensi Magazine uh, does a summary of, of our activities, um, so you can see what we've done in the past. So please share this with other PNG uh, folks. Uh, we want to, you know, as, as there's new PNG years alumni all the time, and we want to make sure we get folks plugged in, and it helps to enrich our community. And you have a role, so thank you for that. Okay, um, now for the exciting part. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about Mike because if I went through his entire bio, we'd, we'd be here for a while. Um, but I want to tell you that I know Mike and I, know, I knew his father for over a decade. And they are a, a sort of a, I don't know what the word is, landmark in the Cincinnati business scene uh, through Centennial, you know, which is a lot of p &Gers have found roles through them or recommendations. Uh, they also sponsor the Fing, which is a networking group that I'm a part of, um, and and Centennial supported. So it's hard to find anything uh, related to people and HR in the Cincinnati area that that Mike and his father weren't involved with. And uh, so I'm really glad he's he's uh, 
speaking to us today. But the exciting part is the new startup that Mike is involved with, which is a Talent Magnet. And that's what he'll be sharing today. There are a lot of PNGers in the cap table. I think he's going to share that with you. Uh, and some of the idea was born out of PNG HR. So um, I won't spoil any of the thunder other than uh, Mike, I've known for a long time. He's a great guy. Um, he's going to talk for, I don't know, however long he wants, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, then do some Q&A. And that will get us to the one hour mark, about 1230. Then if folks want to stick around and apply some of these, there'll be a half hour workshop between 1230 and one. You're welcome to stay if you want, you know, divide into small groups and get some hands-on practice. With that, I will turn the microphone over to Mike and um, everybody, please uh, give Mike a hand. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you so much, Stuart. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. I see some very familiar friends here as, as uh, guests and participants, so welcome. Um, Stuart, again, thank you for the invitation. Um, yourself, Meredith Meyer on your board and many others um, encouraged us to, uh, to spend some time and put this together. So um, excited for the time. I do want a couple housekeeping items. It obviously um, for many people um, in time zones of Central or Eastern, it's lunchtime. Um, for those of you, I don't know where you're all coming from. I'd love to even see in the chat where everybody is uh, posting from, but there might be some of you where it's breakfast. So feel free to turn off camera as necessary. Uh, if you need another cup of coffee, grab one um, or water or what have you. And, um, and meanwhile, also grab a pen or prepare your notes app or Evernote um, to be able to take some notes because we're gonna be challenging you as we go throughout today um, with some things to document because our goal is always that there's something shared that you can implement this afternoon or this morning in your leadership with your team. That's a core value and focus of the Talent Magnet Institute. As Stuart mentioned, um, I'm Mike Sipple, uh, my wife, Amber Sipple, my three children, Jacob, Abby, and Ethan. And um, we are based in uh, the greater Cincinnati area with an office in Newport, Kentucky. Um, I've been in the boutique executive search space for 21 years. Um, I took over our family business um, that now reaches 16 countries um, and the majority of the United States uh, we've represented companies in, mostly family, um, family privately held, private equity owned, and um, public companies typically in certain divisions where there's high, high growth potential and they need to bring in leadership teams. Um, over eight years ago, our strategic plan um, we started talking about bringing this next level of service to clients. Um, therein lies one of my uh, PNG alum, who's one of my mentors, Dr. Janet Reed, who sits on my board. And um, Dr. Reed and our board really encouraged us to launch this platform uh, called Talent Magnet Institute. So we're a global leadership platform that brings coaching, consulting, belonging, and network together. And um, I do have the distinct pleasure to, I see Meredith Myers on the call. Meredith has been involved really since the beginning. Um, we have a board member, Jamal Masher, um, Tyson Betts, who's currently the design VP at Proctor, Wilson Velez and Edward Go all actively engaged and uh, invested with us. So um, we spend a lot of time, we know the language, we know the leadership that uh, executives like yourself bring, and uh, we're very excited to be with all of you today. So we want to help everyone walk away with a feeling of hopefulness, encouragement in your quest to lead well. Uh, but most importantly, we want you to walk away with actionable ways to improve your leadership today. Um, as we say around here, we don't just need to leave our, you have to lead yourself well in order to lead others well. And in no time in my 21 years experience has leadership been more in the spotlight. I know many of you are probably reading and hearing about the data of individuals, um, either A, exiting the workforce, which is happening quite a bit right now, as well as individuals preparing to leave their companies. Um, our belief is if you lead well and you provide a caring, nurturing environment where people feel valued, heard, and understood, that simply wouldn't be the case. And we're gonna show you some of the data to back that up. Uh, but it is the case because people have made decisions or 
done certain things over the last 18 months that has made employees feel uncomfortable um, or not taking care of their unique situation, um, which is going to show up over the next 18 months as uh, things continue to uh, open up as a global economy. So we know that you care about people, whether you're in an entrepreneurial setting or a corporate setting, or you're even consulting. Um, and that's why you're here. Um, so we know that we're excited to have you. Um, you can see here some of the things that we believe um, that this content is going to help you work through. Hopefully there's some, uh, some of this resonates. Um, I would like to ask those in the chat, thank you for putting uh, where you're hailing from. Um, but also we want to ask you what has been the one habit that has remained consistent during the last year that has helped you stay grounded? What is one thing that you've been doing that you did not let up from because you knew if you did, it would possibly get you off, off target and off focus. So this could be things like yoga, reading, journaling, um, cycling, um, you know, walking, walking my dog, right? So just put that in the chat if you don't mind. So we all know that how we use our time um, is critical, right? It's the most um, sacred asset that we all have and how we lead today, how we show up today for ourselves and others is a daily decision, right? So how are you caring for others and how are you caring for yourself? I know in the, um, in the invitation, you saw a self-care quiz that our team put together. So our organization focuses solely on executives and their direct teams, right? That's the heartbeat of what we do. And one of the things that we have been overwhelmed by with the data that we've collected over the last year uh, that started in May 2020, and we'll share a little bit about that as we go forward, um, we created a self-care quiz that was kind of an outcome from all of the outpouring of client feedback from customers and relationships all over the world. And I'm very thankful that we did because it also highlighted some things for me personally, as I speak to thousands of people around this topic, um, that there were also some things I needed to polish a little bit. So we're going to have in the chat, you're going to see it a couple times, um, but talentmagnet.com backslash quiz. Um, we would encourage you, it comes with a fantastic workbook um, that can also be a resource for you and or your teams um, as you do just kind of a self-care check-in. Okay, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. We're going to come back to these. Um, I also, how are you today recognizing great work by those around you? Um, said another way, when was the last time and then how did you recognize your team members, your peers, your colleagues for the great things they're doing? Um, you know, we all know the adage out of sight, out of mind. Um, I will share with you those that are going, I always tell people, think about the individual that you've not spoken to recently. Who is the individual that you've not heard from recently? That you providing an encouragement, you reaching out to them directly via the phone or a video call, or if they've shown back up to the office, that you're taking the time to recognize the good that's happening with your talent. Because it is one thing that has been, um, there's been a lot of separation of space between individuals. You may be less likely to be passing by a cubicle or an office um, and recognition is critically important. So when was the last time and how did you recognize one of your team members or colleagues? If you would add that to the chat. So the Kolar Experience Institute and the Talent Magnet Institute are partners in a national survey that we've been leading, collecting data since May 2020, specifically about employee and leader, leader sentiment. So regarding employee experience, employee confidence, safety at work, and what the data has shown us, it's in really informed today's uh, presentation. Um, we're going to, it addresses ways to improve your leadership and in turn enhance your team member experience. So you'll notice that this list, 
there, while there are some business related focuses here, this is very personal. There's a lot of non-business related factors, things that to a large extent are out of our control. It certainly includes management related issues or opportunities. It also includes some coworker related factors. But what this shows us is that leadership is getting more and more personal. These are the feedback points that we heard if we distill down the thousands of feedback data points um, and we start overlaying them, we start seeing a lot of personal experiences show up, right? We know that humans bring their, they have their whole self. The question we always ask is, are you allowing your people to bring their whole self? Are you welcoming the whole self? Are you helping the whole self? At the Talent Magnet Institute, we use the word holistic. When we say that, we mean helping team members and organizations succeed in relationships, work, community, and life. And we bookend it with relationships and life because we know when you help your team members and those around you succeed in those two components, everything else gets better. So you're gonna hear a lot over the next few years about leadership getting personal. I only wish I would have written the book last year so that it could set the trend and get out there into the marketplace. Because leadership, we've been saying a lot, leadership is a one-to-one -one sport. And the last year has highlighted how personal leadership has become. So what also have we learned? Stress is high. We know stress is a predictor of burnout. We also argue that stress is also a predictor of lack of creativity and lack of innovation. The more stressed and consumed one is, the less creative one can be. 62% of workers reported losing at least one hour a day in productivity due to COVID-related stress, with 32% losing more than two hours per day. We also learned that stress is not just work-related. We saw economic concerns, health-related concerns, both of those 71% of people who participated shared that. Um, employment concerns for loved ones and family, societal concerns that have weighed heavily on all of us, not just due to the health pandemic, but also the racial unrest, the social unrest that's gone on all throughout our world. Also demands on personal life. You're seeing right now a lot of data and statistics come out around how, how do people want to come back to work? No surprise to us that people want some flexibility, but also know the power of being around team, right? So you're gonna see, we believe people moving towards the two to three days flexible, meaning if there's something that comes up, you're flexible. If you feel like one or two or three days a week, you can get more done both personally and at work by being in your own office space outside the office, great. Otherwise, you're also going to see companies be setting up co-working spaces. I mean, I know countless organizations that have completely remodeled their entire space. And the impact that has on culture um, is a lot of work that the Kolar Institute uh, does. Kelly Kolar, the CEO, and us focus a lot on around how does space, place, and environment impact culture and what should we be doing there? You also have probably read articles through Harvard Business Review that people who um, are stressed can make nearly three times, they're three times as likely to leave their jobs. They also, it temporarily impairs strategic thinking and it dulls creativity. You may be raising your hand saying, hey, me too, right? Not just my team, but I am the high levels, 87.5% um, of individuals related a feeling of burnout uh, towards the end of last year. At in middle of last year, that number was down in the 47s. So the amount a 40% increase in an emotion of feeling at the stage of burnout or past it. 
um, in our group discussion later, which I do help you hope you all will be here for, um, we're going to ask how will you approach making a change to strengthen your leadership. So keep that in mind as we review the following slides. And I'm going to ask you to write down a few things that to move you towards creating an action plan. So first, you must lead yourself well in order to lead others well in a remote world. We have to learn to think of ourselves as someone who deserves the time and investment. As an entrepreneur and business owner and an individual who has a team of 16 in my search firm and over now 50 in our talent development firm, um, people look to me all the time from a work perspective and I go home and I pick up kids and run the sporting activities and school activities. I always say people are always watching. No matter what the size, scale, and scope of their responsibility, people are always watching. We have to take care of ourselves because it sets the tone and creates the invitation for others to do the same. We also have to take 100% responsibility for your people and helping them choose how to invest in them and their needs. I also add to the calculation that your team needs to take 100% responsibility. If we all took 100% responsibility of taking care of one another, supporting one another, think about the world that would change, right? How we show up at work shows up at home. How we show up at home shows up at work. Let's start making leadership a one-to-one -one sport and investing in those around us by starting with ourselves. How have you taken care of yourself in the last 60 days? If there's anything that you have started um, since the first of the year or restarted in the first of the year, we would love to hear those. Um, so I can share, I'll, I'll go first. Um, one of my team members who's on the call, Michelle Dunn, encouraged, we were talking about cycling and I got my first ever trek and I'm super excited to say that I've been, uh, I think I've even got sunburn on my scalp a couple times from riding so much, but I took up cycling since the first of the year and i um, excited to do that. But what, you know, I did that to get myself outside some natural vitamin D. Um, I also rehired a trainer. Um, honestly, it was because of our self-care quiz that I uh, rehired my trainer that I had been avoiding for several months due to busyness, right? So I'm taking my own medicine as I listen here and think about, okay, here is a resource that I need, that we're providing out to the marketplace around self-care. And I'm a leader who focuses in this space representing a brand who delivers in this space. And it's so, so important that we all be taking care of ourselves. Um, Margaret, no worries. I did have a helmet on. I actually got sunburned through the helmet, I think, because I was so consistently in the same spot. So, um, but please share, is there anything that you've started or relaunched in the last, since the beginning of the year? Um, and I hope that some of us are taking notes here of all these awesome comments because there's probably some things here that will encourage us to do the same, right? So just share, what are you, what are you working on? What do you want to relaunch? What have you relaunched? Um, I shared two and um, would love to see that in here again. It's such a great encouragement. It also reminds us that self-care is good, right? And as a leader, leaders lead first. Like we need to show that it matters because your people if our representation of data set is any representation of your team, 87.5% of the people around you are feeling or at a sense of burnout, right? So let's lead first, let's lead by example, let's show up differently tomorrow, or you can start on Monday, but maybe treat Sunday as your next Monday and let's get going. All right. So some great things in here around spending time and hiking and taking care of ourselves with meditation. Um, Tim certified as a digital trainer, congratulations. Setting time volume for volunteering, wonderful. Um, and I love Lisa, what you're focusing on of relaunching self. That is an awesome statement. Um, yeah, very, very cool. If there's any way we can help you there, happy to. 
Um, so write this down and give yourself permission to go after it. Write down, you document it here, write down some things that you want to do and that you can do to keep investing in self. Redefining success. So we talk often at the Talent Magnet Institute that we want to help leaders redefine success. To be frank, that's my global why. We want to help leaders understand that leadership is not about work. That framework is inaccurate. Leadership is about relationships, work, community, and life as a whole, right? So many people define leadership success as work-related, and we think it's a terrible mistake. And some lose themselves in that statement to where they can't see anything else until they've lost much or all. Um, so again, thinking about significance, what's our further impact that we can have with the energy that we've been given, the opportunities that we have presented ourselves, and how do we help others do the same? I, I share often that we have a, in an, a work environment where so few employers have this discussion with their team, right? Talking about individual goals. I have seen organizations become more innovative, creative, and drive greater results by having leaders who take leadership personal, who start understanding individual goals that then can tie back to team goals that help us achieve organizational goals. So if I can help you achieve what you want out of life and show you how being with me and our organization is gonna help you get there, and all of our team is gonna help you get there, you will create an environment that thrives. For us, it's called becoming a talent magnet, where you don't just attract, but you retain people and you bring out their greatest good while they're on the journey with you, right? So we talk often about alumni, the power of alumni, the power of experience within organizations. You know that, that work can be viewed as tours of duty. Uh, Reed Hoffman references in his book, Alliance, around tours of duty. We could not agree more that while you're with me, our goal is to help you create the greatest that you can become and bring out the greatest that's inside of you. That is helping shift from success to significance. So take action. You can practice the exercises that we've referencing that we're referencing as a training tool for you, right? These are opportunities for you to have this discussion. Um, we even go so far to make leadership basic and tangible to create little discussion cards that our members receive um, that they're, they can put right in their wallet or purse, handbag and pull out at any time that they're with their team and fire out a question that says, hey, when was the last time you felt celebrated? How did you celebrate your team most recently? What is the number one personal goal, if you're open to sharing, that you want to achieve between now and the end of 2021? When people start sharing the things that are going on and their motivations, they're much more likely to engage, feel invested in, and to be frank, feel less burned out because they're having some personal goal achievement attached to their professional work. So time block, I know that there are individuals who need to start the process, but also need to block out, okay, I can start, but my schedule, Mike, is lined out for the next 60 to 90 days. I have no time to change anything that I'm doing in my behavior, my approach, et cetera. And that's fine. Just put a pen in your calendar that says today is when I will start and block your schedule. So I'll share with you a personal example. I let my team know I was gonna re-engage my trainer. I spent a couple of hours mapping out um, uh, time that would not compress my time to have to interrupt um, not going to a training session. And then also mapped out with my trainer all of the schedule between now and the end of the year. If I would have only done 30 days, 60 days from now, I wouldn't be able to do that again, right? So think about blocking time, getting intentional with your schedule and encouraging your team to do the exact same. The impact of blocking time is critical as leaders, 
as entrepreneurs, as part of family unit, part of friendships, blocking time in all of those areas are critically important. So think about that now. What, how can, what action can you take to have an impact on your time? And how do you want to lead differently six months from now? Because if you're doing the things that we're talking about, everyone around you is going to get stronger. How can you be a better ambassador for your people? You know, we get asked often around, how do, how do I help my people be an ambassador for our business? We turn it right back around and say, first, be an ambassador for them, right? We know things are going on in everyone's world because we all have our own individual lives and own individual experiences. So what are you doing to be an ambassador for your people? One of the data points that we talk about is around isolation, that people are feeling isolated, no surprise, um, some dissatisfaction with team and culture and what that looks like, uh, challenges with training and mentorship and new hire onboarding and um, mentoring and bringing up the next generation. You know, hopefully the last two years hasn't stopped some of that critically important activity. Gallup has shown that workers who know someone cares about them do better work. Boston Consulting Group did some survey work that shows employees who reported satisfaction with social connectivity with their colleagues are two to three times more likely to have maintained or improved their productivity. Social connectivity, as it turns out, is what enables us to, co to be collaborative and be productive in that collaboration. As we think about the workplace of the future, especially in environments considering mostly remote and hybrid scenarios, how do we optimize social connection and collaborative productivity? One of the data points that we pulled out, 60% of individuals would be more inclined to stay with their employer if they had more friends at work. And even more importantly, 94% of employees have reported that they would be more likely to stay at their organization if they felt invested in. What tools are you using to continue to invest in the people in your lives. We've been interacting with an organization, um, a global organization that has 500,000 members on their platform. One of the learnings that they have found is data is not enough, Mike. We were on a call with them just yesterday. They were sharing that data, they are a data-driven organization that, in, that employers go to to collect employee sentiment, employee feedback, employee experience. What they're finding is data is not enough. How do I show up and actively invest in those around me? And how do I do it quicker, right? We say, uh, Jules Breslin and I is on my team as our leadership engagement director. Her and I just put together an article. Um, we say, if you're going to do feedback sessions, have a plan early on of how you're gonna implement. Because so often the organization's employees provide data and do nothing with it. And by the time we do something with it, those employees are gone. They felt even further disengaged. The other thing is, do you have a culture that provides an environment of being psychologically safe, where people feel comfortable sharing with you feedback and engaging with you in a personal and transparent way? So as we move to the next session here, I would ask for you to think about where you as a leader can focus on in one of these four areas that you have in front of you to continue to strengthen your leadership and the way you show up both for yourself and for others. Because leading courageously takes investment. Leading courageously takes boldness and it takes intentional leadership to be a leader who leads courageously. As I mentioned before, and in, in later in the presentation, we're gonna have some breakout sessions in groups. One of the questions that you've thought about already is gonna be how will you approach making a change to strengthen your leadership? 
The second question is, which of the four areas here that you see in front of you are you going to focus on to support yourself and your team? Right now, we have seen a opportunity that organizations have that have over-focused on communications and have not focused on listening. Are we asking ourselves and those around us questions in a manner that requires and engages feedback? Or are we telling people updates and things that are happening? Are we opening ourselves up for communications and dialogue? If so, we need to continue focused on that because we believe that companies have done such a great job telling and projecting, but not engaging and listening. That's a major part of expressing empathy, listening, understanding how to walk. What does walking in another's shoes look like? The life's experiences that have been thrown at so many have opened our eyes to see that not everybody lives like us. Not everybody has the same lived experiences as us. And while many on the call I know know that, there are some who are just coming to understanding of that, and that's okay. We all have to start somewhere. But empathy looks different. Empathy looks a little bit more engaging than we all have done previously. We need to be seeking to understand what is it really, when I see this take place in the world, why do I have that response? Why and what has triggered that emotion and reaction? And there has been a lot go on that is affecting people in those ways. So empathy, you're gonna hear it. It's you know been touted as one of the number one leadership skills of all time of what companies are going for looking forward. And I'll tell you, your employees are saying the same. Leading by example, I've certainly have hit on this multiple times for a reason that leaders go first as it relates to leading by example. So if these daily rhythms that you've referenced, what brings you peace and helps support your mental health first so that you can support others? You know, providing things that you're grateful for and sharing those things real time is a critical opportunity, doing gratitude journaling. I, for one, there's a little pro tip. Um, every time you walk under a doorway, think of something that you're thankful for. Every time you walk under a doorway, think of something that you're thankful for. Whether it's creating a great playlist on Spotify or YouTube that just helps you get in that zone of, of personal enjoyment and satisfaction or meditation, whether it's setting goals, resetting goals, rethinking where we want to go and how we want to get there. Um, also encouraging us to take the time to just enjoy life and what's happening around us. When leaders are vulnerable, their people feel the opportunity to share ideas and goals and be more transparent. So when we are vulnerable, when we are showing those around us that we're open and that we're going through stuff too, right? I always say that people do not expect us to have all the answers. They just expect to know what you know so they can kind of get in line. You know, employees think about whether you like it or not, think about themselves and their family first. So think about that. If employees are thinking about themselves and their family first, why have we not been leading in a manner that makes it a one-to-one -one sport? right? And an opportunity to engage with one another and build team and build cohesion. It can't all be work related, which is a mistake I think we've made for many decades now. Ask openly feedback from your team and listen. You know, we do a lot of 360 work here at the Talent Magnet Institute, and we define 360s as basically it's the tool, it's the key to unlocking the door of potential but it's only cracking the door open. So what you do after it, how you respond to the feedback, how you listen to those around you matters greatly, right? Also, I will add a little asterisk here. Do not start a 360 if you're not prepared to do the work, right? Do not do an employee engagement survey or gather performance feedback or listen about culture and things that are happening inside our organization 
if you're not willing to do the work and haven't put a predefined plan in place. Be both present and future minded. Current state team needs to be made up of all business functions to help manage through the present. So what you're managing through right now and what you're trying to achieve this year and next year, you've got to have a team zoned in on that. But we also still have to be thinking three to five years out, right? Many organizations, I can tell you the strategy consultants on our team, I'm, I know there's a few of you in the audience, we've never been busier, right? Organizations are trying to identify how do I align my new strategic objectives, the next strategic objectives to goals, right? Call it OGSM. There's another um, shift happening with the phrase of OKR and the tools of OKR also similar, um, but people are coming out of the woodwork, wondering how and who is going to help them focus, get their teams aligned. And that's a great goal to go after if you haven't already reached it. However, we have to remain current focused while planning for the future. And I would recommend as cross-functional as possible and also multi-level. One of the things that we see happen is poor execution because of poor buy-in, right? Change management takes time, alignment takes time, and we have to do a better job of engaging and enlisting people from all over the organization, from all different levels of experience. It is something that we all need to do a better job of, right? Being inclusive and equitable in the workplace means I'm including people from every level of our organization to participate in key aspects of the future planning of our organization. It also brings a lot of other things with it, but make sure that in every decision you make that we're being more inclusive and equitable in terms of how we're going about planning for our future. After being together today, I believe you have two options. You can keep doing what you've been doing because you're satisfied, or we can take proactive steps and measures to strengthen our leadership and re-energize our team. So what objections to change are you holding on to? What fears do you have? What challenges do you feel like you're still being presented with? And quickly identify those and get people on your team who can help you navigate through them. The shifts in home, school, and work life have never been greater. Employees are expecting even more of it. And we know that change itself has caused a lot of uncertainty, fear of how organizations will respond and how individuals will respond. Change can be positive, but forced change can create openness to new possibilities while creating that, that feeling of concern. What we also learn is that one size does not fit all. There's a wide spectrum of realities. There's a wide spectrum of experiences and some are comfortable with the new normal. Some to be frank, never wanna go back to certain ways that it was and many aspects of what our world has been dealing with. And that also evolves around personal and work. I'll tell you most of the individuals that have enjoyed the dynamic of working from home more have said that their personal lives are a little bit more organized, right? They feel they have more time to accomplish things that are most important and they're still getting work done. There's also, I know I have many team members that are like, I'm just more productive working from home. So what does it mean around sensitivity of people, right? It means we need to deploy a resilience mindset an ability to adapt in the face of adversity and we need to be better listeners asking questions of ourselves and those around us to ensure that we are gathering real feedback and listening to those and responding in a key way. We have some various resources. Um, we do encourage you to check out, I know the link is in the chat around the talentmagnet.com backslash quiz. Our team is constantly developing tools proactively to invest in our community, to invest in our, we have a podcast that has over 50,000 listeners. 
Um, that's an audience for us that we focus a lot of time on bringing tools and resources as well as our growing um, membership platform. We also, for any of you who do have SHRM certification, um, you can use this for PDC credit. So you have the code here. Um, we can get this over to you if you uh, need it as well. And um, so if you have any questions about that, you can use this on the SHRM website um, for SHRM credit. Um, also the link of resources, um, again, white papers, tools, things that personally challenge you and your team. I wanna thank you um, to all of the PNG alumni, for those who are here and for those who will watch it post event. Um, for those who wish to continue with the 30 minute workshop discussion, we'll be beginning that now. This to me is the most important part of today's experience. The questions are to ensure that both reflection and a plan for action have occurred. At Talent Magnet, we're very focused on learning best practices to lead well and turning those into immediate action to enhance and level up our leadership.